The other day I heard this rumor that one of the best ways to draw consistently is to fixate on something and draw that thing obsessively. Now I'm no stranger to hyperfixation. The reason I didn't watch anime for many years, despite my interest, was because I didn't have time to be obsessed with anything beyond the things I was already obsessed with. I've spent most of my teenage and adult life trying to overcome obsessions with books, TV shows, movies, games, etc. And for the first time in my life, at 27, I have a good reason to obsess over something. But as it happens, there's nothing that I'm currently obsessed with. So I've been digging through the archives, thinking about uh, what old flame that I might be able to reignite. There's some easy ones. Kaya, Star Wars, I could go way back. Twilight, Harry Potter, Omori, Studio Ghibli. I need to dig deeper. Avatar, not the airbenders, unfortunately. Frogs, when I was a kid. Breaking Bad. Oh. I got something. Wait, it's on the tip of my brain. Something that I've suppressed. It has something to do with fairies. Or magic. Peter Pan. The live action Peter Pan shot me into my first ever emotional crisis, realizing that I could never be part of that universe and that I was never gonna be able to fly to Neverland. Did I have a crush on Peter Pan? It's not done. I need to watch more cap cut edits and see which one hits the hardest. I really liked Kylo Ren. Like I really liked Kylo Ren. I just need to figure out how to reactivate an obsession. I need to get there. So to TikTok we go. Maybe I should let my For You page decide. No, I can't. It has to be, it has to be real. It has to be, uh, you know? Fixation so visceral, mentally and emotionally overwhelming that I just can't bear to keep it inside, you know? And I have to spit it out. It has to be, I think, a person, a character, and it has to be in a universe that I want to live in or want to experience that I can't. I need that like forlorn and insatiable longing that will turn into art. I think I can get back to my first order Kylo Ren interest. Maybe I need to watch The Force Awakens again. Call it professional development. It's still in there. All right, so I made my decision. I was ready to get to work. Made some boba. I don't know why it looks like Cocoa Pebbles, but it was delicious. It got me in the right mood to draw. I got my Kylo Ren first order playlist, which I definitely didn't already have from like 2017. Um, downloaded a bunch of pictures that inspired me from Pinterest. My first exercise was, and hold on to your hats, tracing. That's right. I traced, and I'm not ashamed of it. You know why? Because it's great practice. I have matured as a person, and I have come to a true understanding that tracing is an invaluable learning technique for a myriad of different things. Training your muscle memory, understanding how to shape, getting a hands-on feel of someone's technique. No, it's a shortcut. It's 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 not fair to other artists who never tra- Good, let there be shortcuts. As long as they don't lack integrity, let there be shortcuts. Everyone's running short on time, okay? There are still people who say that digital art isn't art because you're not using like real tools and you're not mixing real paints and stuff. So, so I don't wanna hear it. It's a fantastic tool for practice. And this has been backed up by many professionally trained artists. Professors have their students trace in class. As long as you're only using it to practice and you don't post it anywhere trying to get clout, off of something that you traced, especially if it's someone else's artwork, there is nothing wrong with it. In fact, I encourage it. And you'll see later on that uh, this little tracing exercise I did really helped me get a good, uh, quick jumpstart understanding of Adam Driver's face, the general dimensions, as well as how the light typically falls. He has a very prominent nose, prominent eyebrows. He has really strong features. And I think that would have taken me twice, if not three times as long to learn uh, if I hadn't done some tracing exercises. So I am not ashamed of it. I am in fact proud.
After I had drawn or traced him three times, I felt I was ready to start a portrait. Uh, I was pretty timid at first, kind of scared to make any harsh lines. I did like start with the basics. I, I try to understand the perspective of this particular reference photo. Um, got his skull dimensions on the page. Even though I, I took a pretty significant hiatus from hardcore art practice, one thing that has stuck was, I'm gonna finish this one way or another. It is good for me to finish it, especially if I'm feeling unsure, uh, because if I stopped drawing every time that I felt insecure or felt like I wasn't gonna be able to produce the desired results, I would literally never finish anything, so I might as well put my whole heart into it and see where <laughs> I land. There's a pretty clear point here where I, I stop um, worrying so much and I start putting down some harsher lines. I get the the general shape of, of, of his face on the page. I was thinking very little about what the end result would look like. I was just trying to get it on paper or tablet as quickly as possible and remember that because we're, we're gonna circle back to that later on. Look at that eye! <laughs> what a tiny eyeball! <laughs> Once I'd gotten all his features uh, on there, I, I was happy with it, like I liked it, but it didn't really look like him. I literally just used the transform tool to make it the dimensions a little closer to, to, to Adam Driver. I went really, really hard on the shading. <laughs> Harder than I would probably advise, but in, in the past I've been very timid with shading, hesitant to even use like strongly contrasting colors. So a lot of times my my shading ended up looking um, really muddy and not very impactful. So I decided I should, you know, do the equal opposite and, and shade way too hard and make him look like he hasn't slept in 80 days. Here's my end result. Um, I really kind of just let my pen go nuts um, for my first go at it, especially um, with my previous attempts at a portrait, uh, which I'll show you here. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. It was definitely the most dimensional portrait that I had ever drawn. You could see the depth. It was also the first time I've drawn a face that wasn't like anime style or like Genshin style. So um, that alone I was pretty proud of as well. So good start, I would say. Took a day off because I was busy and had other things to do. But I'm here, we're back. Gonna continue just free sketching probably. Like I'm not gonna put much guardrails on myself. I'm just gonna go. Stress, no pressure, just art, you know. I did not have the willpower or desire to try to draw faces at this early hour. So I went more for objects, uh, things that would let me practice shading, let me practice uh, lighting. Very low pressure, but still within the realm of what I was trying to draw. It was very easy to start drawing uh, because I didn't have to make any decision regarding what I was gonna draw. I knew I had a small handful of things to pick from, so I kind of just found some concept pictures that I, I got to work. As much as I can remove barriers of entry to um, getting started on something, the better. Often the blank page and the um, question of what it is that's actually worth my time, those are two pretty obnoxious hurdles to get over and a lot of times I, I won't make it so that was great. I wasn't here for very long. I probably just drew for like 30-40 minutes or so. Okay, good start. I um decided to I was gonna like do line art for this stuff, but I decided to just block it out. Hey, um, remember that. Later that night I had some extra time, so I wanted to try to finish the silhouette that I had started. It's been so long since I've drawn in front of people. The first thing I did was put down like a rough interpretation of the background. Kylo Ren silhouette was very dependent on like lighting and shadow. Uh, so I figured it would be easier to do it if I had like a better perception of like the scene, if I didn't have to imagine it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Notice here how I'm once again blocking out shapes, not really doing any line work, been using mostly the same brush this entire time, just getting the gist, the impression you might say. I struggled a long time with this reflection because I kept trying to draw it like a shadow, like I, I really wrestled with the shape. If the light's coming this way, then this would all be quite dramatic. 
think. No, wait, it's not a shadow, it is a reflection. Wait, no, it's both. Oh my gosh. Until I realized I could just duplicate it, invert it, and put it in the floor. <laughs> I think my original plan was actually better. <laughs> And then I'll just distort it slightly. Yep. <laughs> it was never a shadow. It's a reflection. Good grief. And here you see me working on the very subtle highlights. Mostly I was just procrastinating starting on his face. I feel like I'm not gonna get the results I want. At least half of him is covered by his hand. Yeah, I could just put his helmet on. Can't draw a man's face? Just cover it. We'll treat him like a, like a sculpture. You know? Hey, there it is again. Starting with something large and reducing it down to the desired results. Are you sensing a theme here? I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it. Just barely, but he's there for sure. Maybe I need to draw his hand, maybe that would help. Then that means I would have to draw a hand, so. Then I drew this figure to try to help me visualize like the shape of the lit areas of his face. This feel like less horrifying. The shape is in there. Like I see it. Like I see, like that's an eye, 100% that's an eye. All right, I'm gonna start just moving stuff around. Someone pointed out that he looked like he was getting sucked into a vacuum. Look, that's a face. Honestly, with it being this far away, it doesn't even need to be that perfect, but I just really want to challenge myself. But hey, look, like that's, that's good. That is acceptable. The face is facing. <laughs> if that was a serious, I really, really had to trust the process there. And I'm still trusting the process, honestly. Wow. The driver is driving. That's so true. That's pretty. Okay. It's gonna inhale. Enhance the, sh the highlight a little bit in some areas. You know what it might be actually is the nose. I think the nose is not quite, I'm scared. I'm scared to like mess it up now. I need to look at it from further away. Otherwise I'm gonna panic. It's giving. Not this though. <laughs> However, doing this definitely helped me visualize what I was trying to do. That looks like a monster from Amori, <laughs> but we needed him to get him, you know? That is one of the prettiest things I've ever drawn. Adam Drover, only the real ones know. <laughs> <laughs> you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. You know, my favorite thing about it is that you can actually see like expression and it's actually a different expression than this. He'll always be with us. Don't worry. Thank you, Adam Drover. I think uh, this proves my theory or the theory that I heard on Twitter that if you hyper fixate on something, like if you can channel your hyper fixation into like art, then you'll naturally like, you'll be able to see your progression really well. And you like, it. for me, I, I just liked it because it kind of removed the decision-making process. I mean, I woke up and I was like, okay, I'm gonna draw Kylo Ren today, again. This is my first of him. And this is what I'm ending up with. I'm gonna say uh, experiment successful. I worked a little longer on the background just to make sure it wasn't so dramatically different than Kylo himself. I used brush strokes to basically cover the line art I had done. And I honestly thought I was done at this point. I had enough to show my progress and I feel like I'd tested the theory well enough. I had already started working on the editing for this video and I was sitting on the couch, Joshua was playing Last of Us and I was just hanging out, kind of watching. Wanted something to do with my hands, so I decided to draw one more thing. Try the same technique that I had been kind of developing over the last week. So here's my reference photo. I did the same thing I did with the silhouette. I blocked out the shapes with the key colors, did a little bit of line work after that and then covered all of it with like broad brush strokes. And in 30 minutes, I had this. I honestly don't even know what to say. I followed a simple process that I had followed the night before, expanded on it, added colors, and it worked. Like it really worked. Like I'm low key obsessed with this painting. I feel like I've cracked the code on my brain. There are two big hurdles that I've experienced this entire process. One, the blank page and B, I always do that, 1B. A two, the fear of messing something up. The fact that I could start by just splotching colors all over the page and, and 
refine it from there. It was okay if it didn't look how I wanted it to look when I finished it, because I can just keep going. Like, there's no way for me to ruin it. And that made the process so joyful and carefree and fun. I wasn't questioning my abilities. Like, there's, there was nothing stopping me. And to my great surprise, I produced something I'm proud of. These last like nine days have been so fun. I was honestly afraid that after pushing myself so hard the first time I tried to learn art, I wasn't gonna be able to find joy in it again. But by finding a subject that I'm interested in and zeroing in on a technique that also brings joy, I created so much. And art that I was proud of. Proud enough to post on my main Twitter even though I did it on accident. I'm supposed to be focused on editing, but I couldn't help myself. I, I, had to, I had to try it again. Here's a little Violet Evergarden work in progress. Maybe I'll be able to show you the finished piece on the next episode. If I had to condense everything I learned down into a couple sentences, it's find a subject matter that you are passionate about, remove every barrier of entry that you can, whatever the hitch in the process is, try to remove it or try to make it easier. And trust yourself a little bit. Let me remind you, this is not a result of natural talent. I have tried to learn art in the past. This is a product of, of hard work, patience, determination, practice. I'm very encouraged. I hope you are encouraged. Also, thank you so much for all the love on the previous video. I can't believe it. I was expecting maybe 5,000 views. Maybe. It means the world to me, and I'm so glad that this is resonating with you and you will be hearing from me again. So subscribe, please, if you haven't. Keep doing what you're doing, and good luck on whatever you're working on. Bye.